good afternoon. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Michal Postranecki. He's an architect uh, living and uh, working in Florida, uh, according to his bio. <laughs> And uh, he's going to talk about the concept of opt-out in relationship to the cities of the future. So, welcome. Thank you. So, good afternoon. Uh, before I start to talk, uh, I would like to thank you, the organizers, to invite me. And uh, for the trust that I will know what I am talking about. Because it's uh, definitely a uh, theme or, or topic which we are not talking every day about. So, just a small intro about myself. I'm an architect. Uh, yes, I am living class 19 years, uh, 19 years in the United States, recently in Florida. Uh, just this is my biggest uh, project I ever did in my life. It's the building here. Uh, you can see here, uh, and it was quite interesting experience. Now I'm coming back and forward. Uh, last three years I am uh, collaborating with uh, Czech Institute of Informatic, Robotic and Cybernetic here in Prague, on Prague 6 with uh, Professor Magic. And I, uh, he gave me the opportunity to, to open a city of the center of the city of the future, which means we are bringing partners together. Uh, it's an academic pl no, platform, neutral, politically neutral, we don't care who is who. And it is actually a neutral platform also to our vendors. So we, are, we have vendors from, of course, from a commercial side, from business, but we also have a lot of municipalities. Uh, we have a lot of uh, academics working with us. So we are trying to connect it together and one of our themes, of course, our topic we are talking about is also a um, distributed uh, services, sharing ser shared services and, and then so on. And we are talking about how we should organize the city of the future. So when I am talking about cities of the future, I'm always looking at, to the past, how our predecessors really saw our future. And maybe some, uh, there'll be some uh, things we could, they, they saw very precisely. This is, you can see this picture uh, is showing uh, cities growing up to the high, vertical cities. They expected to use a lot of uh, planes. In today, where we are talking about drones and, and, and using some kind of uh, transportation through the air. And I like this picture because it, it says something about micromobility we are trying to solve today. And it's very, it's a very important term, I mean, topic again for, for today's cities, because we are trying to opt out uh, the, the uh, transportation using cars inside the cities, inside the downtowns. And we are talking a lot about micromobility, but uh, as you can see today, cities have a problem with uh, all those bikes, and then they, they, are, they actually their reactions always are always the first reactions. Okay, we will say they cannot operate here. This is the easiest way. But what is the real opportunity for the future? How we can really opt out from those uh, from those uh, vehicles where you have one one person uh, on, you know, two by three, so let's say on six square meters going through, going through the car, uh, town. But what, is, what, 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 what this picture also says, and that's my question, how it's going to look in the future if we will allow everybody to use uh, something like this, some kind of micromobility micro 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 uh, transportation vehicle, and what if it will be autonomous? So we don't even have to do anything, we just it will go anywhere we say it will go, and so it will be accessible for everybody. So what may happen is the street will be full of that. I mean, the, the, the city will be full of this, of those 
robotically automated autonomously driveless uh, vehicles. What's going to happen next? This is interesting picture. Now, those two pictures are actually uh, was, those renderings were done by the company which is called Otis. Otis is elevator company. Lift they do they do lifts till today. Even in my building we have actually Otis over there. But how they it's Otis interesting how they saw the future in the past. So they, they, they hoped that we will be we will have uh, we will separate all those um, fast vehicles and then and slow slow going vehicles and then pedestrians and we will have nice green areas in in the on, on the floor of the city or the uh, open open city space and it didn't happen of course we are still we are still you know in one space and we will have to find some solution we will we will really have to find what to do for the future because that space is more and more crowded and people are the last one who are actually allowed to that to that space because there are all those vehicles there so what are we gonna do in the next and i i always say i believe we will uh, uh, again with that autonomous driverless cars and other uh, things i believe we will have to really find out how to change the whole space in the city that all and then I'm talking about new Osmanization of cities. Osman, Osmanization. Osman was architect who changed the Paris from 1853 to 1870. Uh, it may happen again in our futures. Different way, of course. I'm not saying we will, we will go and we will uh, take down uh, downtowns of, of our beautiful cities. Uh, Musk is not the first one who is doing hyperloop. hyperloop uh, there was so many ideas before, but again, if I'm talking, it's, we are trying to uh, free the land and move everything somewhere else. But I don't know, uh, is it really an uh, opportunity for our country? Because, you know, our D1, D we call it highway, but really it's more parking space for the cars between Prague and Brno. So is it, are we really a, a, a able to do that? Uh, it's very interesting. This is a very interesting picture for, to me. They are, they, I, I always heard about uh, uh, moving sidewalks. I never know what, what they mean. I, I really also, I always meant that it's sidewalk which will be moving. But this is what actually was the their imagination, their vision of the moving sidewalk. And is this an opportunity we can use for our cities? I don't know, probably not. Not maybe somewhere in some theme park or somewhere else. But again, uh, they, were, they were trying to solve some, somehow the future transportation inside the cities. And you see the same here. Again, a couple of levels. So, but the problem is it's very expensive and we just don't have technology to do it. Uh, we do have technology, but we don't have an really opportunity to do it in our city. And so if you go, of course, if you go to Los Angeles or somewhere, you can see many layers of intersections and, 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 and highways, but even there it's a problem. But this is our vision. Not mine, but um, um, I just took it from the internet. But this is some of visions of the city of the future today. So what they are doing is we are we are moving from the from the country, from villages. Everybody is moving into the city. Not I'm not saying everybody, but many people is moving into the city space, and we have to go higher. We have a lot of regulations today. Uh, coming from master plan, but saying we cannot go specifically, for example, in Prague, we cannot go higher, more than 150 meters, uh, and so on and so on. I think we have to do, we have to go much higher, and then buildings will be much bigger because all that climate change issue and uh, other things. So we will try to probably in the future accommodate more functions in bigger, bigger uh, structures. Uh, but we will see what's going to happen next. 
this is one of other interesting pictures of the future city. Uh, yeah, this guy is it's, it's famous uh, French guy, architect who is doing all kind of these uh, renderings, and we are trying to move. Uh, he's saying we are, we will go to move. We will go and move to to the ocean, and we are trying to basically occupy other unoccupied uh, areas uh, because cities will have to probably if if they if the truth is that ocean will raise up a couple of meters, maybe in the in the future. There's a lot of cities on the coast, and they will have to move somewhere. So and this is a, this is the version of city on the ocean actually. So this is our ability where we are right now. We are connecting everything. We, we are we do really have a lot of technology. Uh, we can talk to each other across the uh, ocean. Uh, I, I, I'm, my work, 70% of my work is done over the internet. Uh, I'm using, of course, WhatsApp. It was Skype before, or other different communication tools. Uh, so I can really reach uh, and manage many things in one time. Uh, one, of, I th one of the things we are also doing right now is uh, working with uh, health, de health well, the guys from health department and then from other from that in, in that health industry, and we are working on uh, telerehabilitation. We even uh, build up one unit which will be introduced uh, next week uh, for uh, one fireman who was injured. He is not able to move too much, but now we will be rehabilitating and. Uh, with uh, foundation which is called Reggae Base, we just prepared this this uh, unit. Uh, it's like container solution, and we brought it to his house, so he doesn't have to go every day to um, to, to to exercise and, and rehabilitate. So we brought it to him, and now we are. This is not a picture, of course, but we are connect the, the, the man who is rehabilitating, or woman who is rehabilitating with him, who is just using just very simple things, um, and then and they have face-to-face -face contact. She can, she can always, or he can always uh, uh, control him if po posture and, and everything is uh, right, if he does things right. So we have a huge opportunity to talk to each other and do finding, we can find new type of businesses, but you can also find new type of services and way how to do things. What this is right now big for many cities around the world, and sometimes I think that we don't talk about anything else than about smart, so-called smart cities. You, I call it Smart City 007, as a James Bond, you know, all, he has all those tools and, 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 and I'm kind of. I also wrote, of course, a couple of articles about smart cities, but I didn't expect it will grow to this. Uh, this, uh, I would say, I don't know, I would call it nicely, but uh, to this situation that everybody says talks about smart city and that it's everything. What you can you can talk about everything. It's always smart city. So. Uh, but true is we are implementing technology into anything what we what we can. So it's smart energy networking, smart metering, compute, uh, uh, automotive uh, industry, medical. I was talking about that. All industry, uh, which is using a different team, which is called uh, or name for them, it's called Industry 4.0. It's basically the same. They have the same principles. Everything is connected to everything. There's a vertical, I mean, vertical and horizontal connection. Uh, connection human to robot, robot to human. Uh, you will see further what I'm, what I am meaning by that. And and the truth is, it's helpful, of course. We, we are we we know how to organize things better. We know we we can d dig a lot of data. So I can, I have better knowledge about existing cities. Use it uh, using BIM building information management uh, tools, 
and software so I can build, uh, I mean, project new cities or new buildings through those uh, tools. Uh, I can share everything with everybody uh, in, on the team, which is very, very good. Uh, but the truth is that when I started, I had, draw every, I had to draw everything by hand. <laughs> and uh, my brain was working with my hand. It was very quick. It is a very quick connection. But we are losing this uh, skill. And sometimes we are focusing only on shape of the building. And then we are, and how everything will be connected inside. And we are losing knowledge about how it should be organized inside so it works for the people. And the same is with the city. I am uh, that Chirk, the building where I'm uh, right now, uh, uh, Prague 6, is, uh, is actually, the building won some prize for architecture, but it's very difficult for us to live inside that building. Uh, they call it smart building, but it's not really smart because, you know, so always uh, the, how do you call it, reality, Shades are always moving up and down how they want, you know. You want to, you want, you, you don't, uh, there's no, there's not either one switch or so. You, can, you, don't, you cannot switch on and off uh, simply by your, uh, your light. Uh, everything is controlled by something. It doesn't work always. But, but the, the, I have a, I have a, I have space like this, and above me is a kitchen. And when they end the they, they work, I can hear everything going out because nobody was thinking about how to insulate everything. So technically, it's a very smart building, but my guest thinks they are sitting under the toilets, and there's thousand people coming in one side and putting all their what they have inside themselves. They put in one side. So it's. So we are losing sometimes that, uh, that knowledge to the technology because of that. So I think there's, there still should be some, I believe, there should be some, uh, we should focus more on our skills, own skills, as a people, not about what we can do only with technology. This is what is, of course, you know, this is better than me probably. This is uh, about IoT. Uh, Everything will be connected with everything. Uh, everything will be talking to everything. So, uh, and we can uh, use it for any type of industry and, and any type of uh, things we have. We wear on ourselves. So we will, of course, be also monitor. We are already already monitor. Uh, Big Brother knows everything about us. Uh, how we can you know, avoid it, I don't know. I don't think there's even possibility to be, uh, there's no possibility to be uh, watched 24-7. And we are relying more and more on, on the technology, even on those variables. Uh, I don't have any right now, but I have a phone. And technically everything what we are talking here about can hear somebody else. And uh, it could be used against me if I say something, maybe, in the future. So, what is, the, what is the reality check? It's this. Uh, this picture, to me, is showing what... So, we have some kind of opportunity. That's what we are right today. What we are now, today. See? Nobody talks to anybody, almost. Uh, it's, I mean, maybe you have different experience, but uh, if you go to Metro or... or, uh, or if you use tram or some uh, whatever uh, transportation service, what you see is people watching to, to their uh, mobile uh, phones or computers or something else, and then though they almost don't connect to each other. Uh, you even go to small kids are you know on on uh, sand in sandbox are just playing with with uh, so so this is where you are right now. And again, I am using those two pictures. This is what we are really we are creating right now. What is happening slowly, but this is really happening. Uh, you are younger, much younger than I am, uh, but uh, I don't think we really want this. 
we have to be able to uh, have an opportunity to not be connected 24-7 to technologies, and we have to survive without that. This picture is from 54, if I'm right? 1950, it was, it was issued, this, this magazine, at 1954. Uh, basically shows what's gonna, what may happen in the future. Uh, so robots are revolting against people, against human, humans. Uh, because we, in the future, we will be talking about robots' rights, how they, we will collaborate to each other, how we coexist to, e to each other. And what I did is, I have, for a friend of mine who was writing some book about future cities, so I did a couple of illustrations. So, before I go, before I talk about options on the opt-out for small cities, I'll show you what I think is, uh, about the future city, about the future people, because cities are really mirror of their users. People are they don't exist if they don't have they don't exist if they don't have users. Till now, of course, in the future we may have some autonomous, automatic, automatization, uh, automated cities. But let's don't talk about those. Those are structures they can operate without humans in the future. Uh, we already have them, uh, some structures like that, but they are more industrial uh, uh, structures than, than cities. So what we are doing right now, we are creating, I call it roboticus, homo roboticus, uh, just uh, for alternation to homo sapiens. And we rely on that. We believe it's actually a great idea. But, of course, it's, it's, it's not going to happen from one day to other day, from day to day. It will go slowly. Now we are able to put a lot of additions to our body. Uh, we, are trying to put, we, are, we are able to put a lot of sensors in our bodies, uh, alternate some kind of uh, parts of our bodies. All that we know, what we, we have technology now, a lot of technology. We, uh, uh, but the problem is that, for example, in the United States, where I live, you have a huge problem with uh, people who, are, who rely and live on drugs. I don't mean, I mean drugs as a, I don't know, heroin. I mean the normal drugs, prescription, prescri prescription drugs from the, from the me medical drugs, and then there's no real focus on their on their, uh, what I said, psychic side. Uh, and then you see there's a lot of shooting, and there's a lot of mass shooting, I mean, which is, of course, popularized a lot. That's why everybody here about America, in America, everybody's shooting to everybody, it looks like. But there are mass shootings, and those people are mostly crazy. It's not about the guns. It, uh, it's about those people who are really getting crazy. That's very, very, very sad. Uh, yeah, we are able to, right now, we will be talking a lot about uh, human to robot uh, uh, collaboration. This is, our this is our real future, which is coming right now. It doesn't have to be a robot like this, but it can be just, it can be just software. It's still, uh, it's all powered by AI. Uh, you know, they probably know more than me about AI, but this is where, where we are looking right now, we're going. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, even in the recent days, nowadays, is we, we, we are talking about partnership bet between human and between a robot. Some of, some of elder people, for example, they are using uh, toys, uh, which are looking very, very s realistically, very similar, like, uh, like uh, look, they look alike. Uh, small doggies or uh, no, no, some kind of pets. And they, really, they help those old people, they help them to not be alone, so they can survive uh, their uh, days. And they have some partner to talk to. So I believe it's very important to have friends, and maybe our friends will be more uh, robotic, cowly, uh, AI-powered things. But what we really need to do is, in the future, uh, we have to build a infrastructure, technical infrastructure for all those new guys which are, will surround us. And everybody, everybody says, okay, we, in five years we can drive everybody in autonomous cars, drive, driveless cars. 
and it will help us a lot. It's not really true. We will find a couple driverless cars which will be able to drive through the, through the, through the cities, but not all of them, because for all of them we need completely different infrastructure than we have today. Uh, and we will be relying a lot on uh, things like 5G technology, uh, which has to be spread, uh, all those you know, beacons have to be spread around us in the town. So signal is not you know, weak somewhere, so it, it, it functions the proper way. And it will take uh, many, many years. So yes, there will, there will be some autonomous driverless uh, cars, and, but I believe much sooner there may be a lot of different things around us. A lot of, I'm not saying robots looking like this, but normal small things which will be running around you and you, don't, you will not know what is their function for, but uh, there may be even more, more uh, robots like that, more than people on those streets. And this is the future we have to count on because it's going to happen. Right now, uh, I think it was in Atlanta, they were solving a problem. If small robots, is, which is wearing pizza to his uh, client, good, I, 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 can, I can end it immediately. Just let me, tell me how long you want me to talk. And I, so, uh, uh, the pizza is going through town, crossing the crosswalk. Now, who has the right of the way on the crosswalk? Pizza, pizza robot or car? Or, no, it's, you would say it's normal, it's a simple solution. No, pizza robot has a, why? Uh, in the future, they will have to communicate. We, in the future, we may not have even some crosswalks. Because why we, should, why we would have crosswalk if my body, through some tools, are communic is communicating with uh, all those cars? It, it will be one mesh network somehow connected together. Information from me will be about me will be immediately somewhere else. But how we, what if I don't want anybody to have information about me moving through the town? It's, gonna be, it's something where we have to really find out how to solve this problem, how we can opt out from those technical, you know, uh, the, the, the word when, when everybody knows everything about myself and they can you know, use this information. Uh, this is just a picture I'm, I was trying to uh, uh, talk about. Uh, we, we talk about gender a lot. Here, to, no, no, I'm not. I don't know if here, but in US, there's a lot of about. There's a woman, there's a man, and there's some couple. I don't know how many, 20 genders. Also, what they they, they are able to define. Uh, but what we will be talking about are new relation kind of relationships between people and a robot, a robot to robot, and and even our relationship is changing. You can see it. You can. It's. It's completely different than it was many years ago. So what we are creating really, to me, it, it, how I see it is we are, I call it cybernetic, cybernetic digital twin. So for the future uh, cities, we are talking about, uh, we are really talking about digital twins of cities. So we will be able to manipulate or, or function uh, or turn off and turn on uh, some functions in the city. Uh, so we are using technology to connect everything to everything. As I said, we have sensors in everything so we can control uh, the usage and, and so it's perfect. The, the problem is that if you centralize this control, uh, it's extremely dangerous because somebody can take over uh, control over it. So what I am working right now and I'm proposing, we have to find some, I call it opt out. Uh, 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 we have to find some uh, way how to not be uh, dependent, how we don't depend on big guys or big uh, or companies really owning the cities because if they want, they turn on the gas, they turn off the, they turn off gas or, or, or electricity, 
you have no opportunity to then to do what they say. You have to pay them whatever, whatever they say. So we are working on, I call it off-grid solution or, or island solution. And we are focusing with, with, my, with my group in that center of the city future, we are really focusing on those on solutions when you can really opt out from those big, big companies and big technology guys and have a, uh, have a, your own solution for the cities of size 500,000, 5,000 people, uh, like, uh, which is half of the population living actually in Czech Republic. Uh, in the uh, Central Bohemian uh, region, uh, which are, they are our partners in our, in our center, there's about 1,000 uh, small s villages and cities, having about 1,000 people only. It's a lot of people living there, and they rely on, on those big guys, but because they bought all that technology, all that infrastructure, most of them in most cities, and they own it, so they cannot do what they want. You have to ask somebody if you want to put your PV uh, photovoltaic uh, unit. You have to ask. You cannot just do it. You cannot. You cannot be supplier to the to the uh, uh, electric grid. Even if you make it, and maybe we are talking about smart grid, so-called smart grid. When you are not only user, or, or you, you don't buy, but you supply back that electricity, or you can, so it means you have, you have let's say you have a factory, or, have some, 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 or you have network of your institute around the, around the Czech Republic and world, and you, you should be able to, have, to send your uh, energy you actually made on your property and send it to somebody else uh, on the other side of the city, which is normal. It should be normal. But you cannot do this now, now because the big guys say, no, you cannot do it because we own that. We own that infrastructure. So you sell it to them for small money and they sell it back to you for big money. So it's, it's, it's nonsense. So we are trying to uh, find out how to create those island solutions for cities, for water, specifically for, for water and ele electricity. Because if you don't have water and electricity, you cannot survive, basically. And we are trying to do it not on, I'm not saying on, always on the property of the city, but we are trying to do that uh, 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 in some surrounding, okay? <laughs> okay, I have to stop talking, so I'm sorry, I cannot tell you everything what I want, but it, it would be a couple of hours more. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, applause for him, please. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, do you have Do what? you have any question? May I have one more? more, more thing? Yes. What of I course. didn't talk about is cryptocurrency and things. I didn't talk about distributed uh, uh, distributed uh, system. We want to use in the future to control our politics you know, and, and money. So I'm sorry, I I, I, I forgot. No problem. About time, yes, so. Yes. Uh, thanks for the talk. The question that I have is, uh, in the past, the reasons because the, 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 the big cities started to grow was because of centralization uh, matter. But now, nowadays, with, with internet, we are decentralizing a little bit. I mean, you still have the factories, but we don't need these central monetary centers anymore. So do you think that the, the cities are still going to grow in the same uh, speed or more decentralization? Around? So this is an interesting question. 20 years ago, before I moved out to the United States, I was working for a small city, Votice. And the biggest uh, issue was that people are moving out from that small city, going out to the bigger cities. So I call it, I call it uh, gravitation power of those of those big cities, they just you know suck everything in. Uh, Twenty years later, the biggest issue for the future and is that uh, in about 2050, there will be 70 peop 70 percent people living in big cities. But that's what they say. What you answer? Uh, 
in, in our region, I don't think that everybody would like to move to city. There's many people uh, moving out. Uh, when internet started, I mean, not when it started, but uh, in my time, 20 years, uh, 20, 24 years ago, I actually, I, I had an office in Prague, and I let uh, my employees, I, I, I told one employees one day, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to pay for offices here for you, because you are just, you know, playing games here, and if I'm not here, I was traveling a lot, and I find out that they are doing nothing there. But they are using actually my office for doing their work. So I said, oh, no, I'm shutting down the office. So I gave, I gave to three of those employees, I had about 15, but I said, bye-bye, I don't need you more. So I gave three of my employees a computer, and I told them, you work from home. And I moved from city, from Prague, I moved 50 kilometers out. Uh, I was in the middle of the now nowhere. The only problem was that internet in that time, it was a mo modem working through t telephone, so half megabyte, it was very, <laughs> very slow, and our drawings are big, so it was a little bit difficult. But in the future, I'm talking, uh, so we have the same problem, saying people are leaving our uh, small towns, going to big cities, and then, and then they ask me, how would you solve it? I said, very simply, just, you know, uh, export, export work from big cities to, to the countryside. And then how we will do it? And so you have internet, why? you have so many opportunities to do that. And also, you can set up those small hubs, uh, uh, I, I call it hubs on the wheels, I just go out and set up some uh, hub, provisional hub over there. We, uh, in my, I, when I was really small, uh, I, even before, there, was, there, there were buses going with uh, books, libraries, there were buses going with the, you know, uh, they were doing uh, two uh, surgeries, and you have buses now going, they are, uh, in, in, even in the United States right now, uh, you can find out taking your blood or checking your blood or, or your sugar. So there's a lot of opportunities we can use. But people are always interested to go to, go to cities because there's, there, are, there are different kind of uh, opportunities. And of course, you can do uh, robotic uh, orchestra playing, you know, in, in, in a known symphony hall. But, you know, uh, you can transfer this, this experience through the internet, but you, will, you don't have the same feelings. Like, we are talking to each other right now. We are, uh, we are using some expressions, and you can you know, understand what I'm saying, because I'm also using my hands. And, and, and. But this is, this is different world. If you, if you just do everything through the internet. So that's why you go to city, probably. And, but there's a lot of people who want to go out. Sorry. So thanks for the talk. Um, about uh, micromobility, cars in the streets. So um, the future that a lot of people are talking about is that we have electrical cars and that we have electrical scooters or whatever. But what I'm seeing, I, what I find, it's not very attractive to me that we are now changing the, the fuel cars to the electric cars and have even more cars in the streets, plus autonomous cars. Um, do you think the, 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 the story of uh, owning a car can be, um, how to say, um, can be, can be um, changed to, to a story of shared mobility? What, what would be a nice incentive for people to yeah. stop owning one car and be the only person in the car to share the car with other people and to reduce traffic so we have better yeah. air, more space, and nicer cities? So you, you probably know, you have, uh, thank you for a question. It has, it has actually a couple, uh, it's a variety of answer because you said sharing cars. Sharing cars, you mean that you, other people are using also your car. That's what you mean, probably. In the first place, actually. Yeah, yeah because um, sharing cars also mean that you can, you don't have to own car, you just use some yes. sharing service. Yeah, yeah, because so, otherwise, yeah. I don't think it's very attractive. It's only attractive to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the car, for the car dealers, for the car companies to yeah. give out shared cars, which yeah. are actually not. Yeah, yeah. so uh, what I am, I always say, it's a great idea to share cars, of course, but let's start with uh, updating our regular uh, 
transportation, transportation service, uh, make nice seats, you know, it, uh, make it so it doesn't smell inside. So start here because it's completely different if you are using a tram or bus, bus or metro and you have 100 people inside it. In that, then, then when everybody will be able to use his own car or, or somebody else's car, because you are not really solving problem with, I even think that having all those driverless, driverless cars give opportunity to everybody to travel. So what is going to happen, that's why that picture uh, when, when everybody was on that micro-mobility micro in that bubble, I believe that it will be even worse than today. So we will have to find out how we will regulate this situation. Of, uh, so, so you can have shared service, but you will not be able to use it because there's too many our cars already. So this okay, no, no more vehicles inside this, let's say downtown or inside inside the zone. So, so, but I want to go there. So, there will be a lot of interesting questions. How many? How much? How many Two minutes. minutes? Two minutes. Three minutes, okay. And I think it's a real huge problem waiting for, uh, waiting for us. And then also you said electricity. There, this is the other thing. We are only going to, um, uh, going a lot to electricity powered car, but we have other opportunities. I think that uh, you know, uh, there's much better solution than, than electricity because we will be again, again, depending, the, uh, we depend on the big guys who will actually, so, so it's not actually the opportunity to opt out for our recent so, uh, solution. Yes, it's uh, probably a little bit better for environment, but on the other side, we have to have batteries, how we will liquidate those batteries, nobody talks about that really. And then you are still, you are making cars somewhere else, somewhere else, and you are moving it here, so we have a lot of the CO2, uh, behind you, uh, so is it okay like that? Absolutely. It okay. And, and, uh, sorry, I forgot the, uh, yeah? the trains and trams. I, I like yeah. them very much, and I use them a lot. And and I think I just think it would be a nice step to make it more attractive to people to use it more. But yeah. I think yeah. the story of owning a car is yeah. still very strong, and I yeah, think yeah, this yeah. is something we have to change. Can, but can you imagine that you have a lot of money, I mean, maybe you have a lot of money, uh, but you have a lot of money, uh, you want to have some nice car, which smells only, you know, uh, your way, and, and you have your things there, and, and you are used, you, you have to give up all that. I, I don't care too, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not using car in city, I, I, when I bring here, when I come here, I'm using only uh, transportation, uh, like tram and metro, but there's many people who are sitting every day in that car going. <laughs> I, I always, I'm always uh, having fun, fun when I'm going, uh, cro I'm crossing the Kulaťák, uh, that was the name, Vítězné náměstí, every day. So it's a lot of crossings I'm doing, no, no, a lot of, and then you, there are those cars, Mercedes, Bavorák, all those big cars, one people inside. And then I, I, I need five minutes to go from point A to point B on the other side, and they are still there somewhere. I said, okay, good, good for you. <laughs> no. Okay, well, thank you so much, Michal, you. for your presentation. Um, you can stay here for the next one. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kindness that you didn't, you know, Tell me, go away. This is, this is nothing what is not interesting. But trust me, we, are ch we will be change a lot in the future. So, thank you.